Hello again. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Talking sprint car racing. Our favorite time of the week. We are so glad that you have joined us. We have got a great program for you, but one little thing we need to address before we get started. <laughs> and this goes back to our control room. Craig, we got an echo that is driving us nuts. So, and the echo is gone. No, the echo is... No. No. No, it's still there. So we've got an echo. So I know something is open somewhere that doesn't need to be open. But it's all good because we're talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. It's gone. It's gone. The echo is gone. The music is gone. And we are good to go. And we are here talking sprint car racing. Craig, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, Good, good stuff. And uh, we have a great program for you. Lance DeWeese and Shane Gullivan, the two big winners this past Mm -hmm. weekend. So how are you? How are things? I'm good. Very good. How about you? Fantastic. Fantastic. We're counting down. Counting down the uh, the NASCAR schedule. Yeah. Counting down the racing schedule. I mean, everything is good. The Homestead not being the finale still throws me off in the NASCAR world. Someone asked me, when are you doing, I'm doing a half marathon. When are you doing your run? I said, the week after Homestead. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, when everyone's not. in Homestead, I'm like, oh, yeah. no, that's not the yeah. way it is anymore. So the we, I, but it's just like, it is, it is still weird. Yeah. Uh, that that homestead and boy, how about I mean, Larson? how many years yeah. was that? Well, it was forever, and it was such a neat setting, such a neat place. Uh, the whole conversation down there was like, we we should be here for championship. Yeah, we yeah. Should be no, here. but it was uh, awesome to see Kyle and Victor Laney. Man, I'll tell you what, he had that baby dialed in, mm-hmm. didn't they? Cliff Daniels and that crew, they had that baby dialed yeah, in. Did. And I that's guess, his style track, too. Well, no doubt. I mean, not that there is a track that's not no, Larson's style. Um, it started in the morning. Cliff had a come to Jesus meeting with the team. Oh, um, that apparently was 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 rather impressive. Mm. Um, impressively done. Cliff Daniels is just one of these fascinating yeah. guys. I, I I think the world of him. One one of the things right off the bat that I respect is that he's become like a sprint car junkie. Like he watches more flow racing and dirt vision than Kyle Larson does. Really? Yeah, he loves dirt track racing, sprint car racing. Loves it. He did it initially to get inclined to get like with Kyle to yeah. get understanding Kyle. Well, now he's just got a bug for sprint car racing, <laughs> so I like that. But he um, he had a he had a powwow with the crew uh, on Sunday morning. That was the, the the speech. My understanding and just some hearsay was it was an impressive, motivational speech that, to some some degree, was come to Jesus, and another degree was let's go put one on them like they ain't ever seen. Hmm. Well, the result is they went and put one on them, maybe yeah. like they've never seen, but they, I mean, it was like 199 of 267 yeah, laps they was... led. I mean, and and it was just impressive. And uh, pit crews, pit stop, everything was great. Yeah. And so, fun stuff. So, we had more echo back. We have echo back again. <laughs> I think Craig's messing with us. Nikki go. is. I think so, too. So, um, so we, um, so it was impressive. It really was. Yeah. And he put that car on that rail, and it was just like, just let her eat up. And, you know, and, and, and Aaron, we, we always talk about this. When do they call them down? When do they say you're nine seconds ahead? When do they call them down? You don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. You don't. Anymore. No. You don't. Know. Well, I mean, <laughs> and we saw this down there at Homestead. Mm-hmm. And I know this is sprint car talk, but we saw this. This is, this is a Tyler Reddick when he won his two championships yeah. down there for Junior Motorsports. And it's like he's gone. He's like 10 seconds ahead of everybody. Last lap, I was in turn three. Both years, I was in turn number three. Yeah. Last lap, right on the fence. I'm like, dude, you don't need to be doing this. But what's comfortable and fast, you get out of well, your rhythm. Well, and sometimes to change that up, exactly. Yeah, you get out of your rhythm, you got a problem. But Kyle Larson, back to the winning ways, and uh, good to see his third Cup Series win. Let's get into it, though. Sprint Car Talk, our Hepner Racing product, Hot Topics. Man, oh, man. Speaking of putting it on him. Yeah. Uh, Lance DeWeese. The 60th annual Champion Racing Oil National Open. Um, I don't. We're gonna talk to Lance in a little bit. I just. I don't even know. It's tough to find words to describe where we're at watching this, other than just sheer excellence. Yeah. I mean, really. it's just we. I love motorsports. I I love when we have battles. I love when we have brawls. Some races <laughs> are boring. Some this and some that. But, man, I think the thing that I enjoyed the most is when you just watch sheer excellence. And, boy, that's what we've seen with Lance over the last month or so at Williams Grove. Yep. And it don't matter if you're an outlaw. Was it five in a row? Five in a row at Williams Williams Grove. Grove? Yeah. Um, 
and he told me, I was down, he was down in Millbridge with coal racing last week. And I said, how do you feel about Grove? He said, and, and this is unlike Lance. It's like, our car is really good. At the yeah. Grove. Yeah. And usually like, there's we? so yeah, much so where that, we can improve. Like they, um, they, they had the rain out. He won the Friday night prelim. Then it got rained out Saturday and port was in between there. They took Cassidy's car to port. They didn't even take the Donnie or to take his car to port. They took mm. Cassidy's car to port because they didn't want to touch the um, the Williams Grove the Williams car. Grove car. And, so, and that car was that 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 car from from first lap of hot laps. And yeah. that's what you got to do to win World of Outlaw races. You can't just be good in the forty lap run. There yeah. was a lot of cars. Anthony Macri was great. He started ninth. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean Danny Dietrich. And he had Brett Marks yeah. on him the whole right. race. Exactly. Um, you gotta, you, you gotta win hot laps. You gotta qualify well and you gotta put it all together. And that's what they did. Yeah. It was unreal. And to manage that for 40 laps. On I mean, a track it, that yeah, was he just was dominant, tricky. but Brent was there. Brent never was totally well, on that lost. one restart at the end when yeah. Brent got him and the, the red flag came out, yeah. saved his keister. <laughs> yeah. And he acknowledged it saved his keister. I mean, and then, and then to find out that they had a broken shock tower or broken yeah. wing tower. I'm like, so this wasn't, this car wasn't. It looked perfect to me, yeah. but it wasn't. But I just the way he the way he goes around the racetrack and the way that car goes, I mean, the way it comes down the straight, that car handles on the straightaway and in the turns. Yeah, he has more. It looks like more left rear drive off of both ends of that racetrack than anyone else. Yeah, and it just and it. But how you manage that when the track is heavy as it was, you know, it was not wide compared to a normal. No, Williams no, Pro no, race. no. Because a lot of times they're way yeah. up into the fence. Yeah, yeah they weren't. It's it's fascinating to watch fifth career national open win. They they dubbed it one for the thumb. Uh, he's one behind Donnie Schatz there. He broke a tie with Steve Kinzer on that. The wins are over four decades. Nineteen ninety six was his first national open win. Two thousand one, two thousand two, and here he is. Two thousand eighteen and two thousand twenty two. Led flag to flag. Twentieth career World of Outlaw win. Thirty first on the all time list. Ties Greg Hodnett. 111th Williams Grove win. <laughs> well, that's nothing. He's got 121 at Port Royal, so come on. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, still 10 behind there. It's like, come on, Lance, let's get, keep heck? going here. What the heck, exactly. The, uh, the other factor of this thing, the thing that just, that just about this team is that, is that, and we're going to talk to Lance, and Lance does a phenomenal job driving that race car. But I am telling you, when he shows up at the racetrack, he has a piece. <laughs> yeah. And that's Davey Brown and Donald Craig Jr. And, and Calvin and everyone else. But that's that, that to me is the thing. You literally, uh, Ashley and I, we recorded our television program, and I and I don't know if I said it on the air or not. You have to be a certain age to get into the Hall of Fame, and there's three of them that are beyond that age, <laughs> just kicking it and taking names. Yeah, I mean, I think it was. I, I think this year one of the things we've talked about is how impressive. It's been what Brent Marks has done. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brent and uh, Heath and Fudd, yep. three young guys in their prime, going out there kicking butt and taking names. I think it's even more impressive when it's three <laughs> old Hall of Famers out still there, in their still prime. in their prime. No, I agree. That's the thing. It's A like, few years into their prime. yeah, yeah, one or two years into their prime. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's it boggles my it's mind amazing. just what this team does. And, and then, I mean, they're, they're full time, but they're not full time either. You know, like it's no thirty. Uh, yeah. I think I saw thirty six races. Yeah, I mean, how many? Br- how many has Brent run? He's run. Yeah, probably eighty five, ninety. Yeah, exactly, and same with Anthony. Yeah, it's just it's 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 just we're watching excellence here, and I know posse fans are standing and beating on their chest and screaming and hollering, and that's great, and that's what we do as fans. And they earned it. They've earned it. Folks, let's just savor this. We are going to, 20 years from now, we're going to tell kids and grandkids, you should have seen that 69K back in 2022. You want to talk. You think, you think, you, you think Owen Larson is good, you know, 20 years down the road. You think Owen Larson is good. You should have seen Lance DeWeese and those guys, you know. I mean, you just, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, and, and, uh, and we're going to talk about this a little later on. The posse swept the podium with mm-hmm. Brett and Anthony there. I mean, you want to talk about Beer Hill being a happy place. I can't imagine. It's just good <laughs> stuff. It really is. So uh, we're going to talk, and, and we're also going to talk to Shane Gollibeck, who was out at the uh, 28th annual e, uh, Abreu Vineyards 
um, trophy cup. And Tulare uh, picked up the win. Uh, the three-day format, and this is always weird because when you look at the results, Zeb Wise won the race. Yeah. Um, the, the Saturday night race, it was uh, Ryan Timms won the Thursday night prelim. Friday night prelim was Tyler Courtney. But what it set up, it set up Shane Golubek with the most points. And you know how that trophy cup works. Congratulations, yeah. you won the points. Go to last. And get your elbows up. And and Shane started 20th and raced to third. Mm. And that was it insane was. racing. He, yeah. I was watching some of the highlights of that oh. thing. They were running the wall. Uh, no, running uh, the wall. Yeah. Literally. You're, you're, yes. There are those who will run up and put a right rear on, uh, uh, touch the wall. That one guy... <laughs> Was right rear on and the wall. it did bite him eventually. It did, but he was... and bless his heart, Rico went up there and tried it. I think it got a little too much. And when and when it's a little too much testosterone for Rico, yeah, it's 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 just like Rico went up there the one time. It was like, oh, I'm not, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I was, you know. Well, they'd like run the wall in three and four, but then there was like a something that they would hit when they came back off the wall. Like it was a it was rough watching it was them crazy. three and four. I mean, it was just insane. Um, California, oh my gosh, California sprint car racing is just, it's a league of its own. It and is. It's so good. And so Shane Golubek, uh picked up the win, third trophy cup win. Man, oh man, he just has that thing figured mm-hmm. out well. Um, just so cool. And uh, then the, the other thing with this thing is, and, and this, this thing started off really good. They would churn away in the early years. And they would, you know, then they got to a hundred thousand a year. Yeah. And then they got to like, oh man, we got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This thing last year, it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This year, three hundred twenty five thousand dollars to make a wish. It's just you just look and you watch, and it's it is it is my. I mean, and and I got to talk to my folks at NASCAR. It is my number one bucket list race Mm -hmm. that I want to go to because I just I just want to see this all week long. Because it's just, it's, it's so passionate, so exciting, such racing. And yet, you know, through the spaghetti feeds and the taco feeds and everything else. <laughs> I was just going to mention it's that. It's just so much food. And, and you're, you know, and you're, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're walking in and you're shelling out $20 for the spaghetti feed. And that $20 is going to charity. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're just like, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. So tip of the cap to Dave Pusateri um, and everyone out there in California, you, you guys, you guys just, you guys and gals out there have something so special, mm-hmm. so special. And um, we all just, uh, just, it's just something I want to see. That's for sure. Other winners, Friday night, Babs Motor Speedway, Geo Selzy picked up the win. Um, Saturday night, Ohio Valley Sprint Cars were at Ohio Valley Speedway in West Virginia. It was Jason Myers, not, or Jamie Myers, not Jason Myers. <laughs> Jake Noman picked up the win at Jacksonville. And this is going to shock you, Aaron. Atomic had a 410 sprint car race, and Cole Duncan won. No. 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 Um, I would like to be good at one thing in my life as Cole Duncan is as Atomic <laughs> Speedway. I just, I don't care what it is. One thing in my life <laughs> I would like to be as good as, at, as Cole Duncan is at Atomic Speedway. Yeah. I'm not asking for much. Just one thing. Gosh, it's impressive. It really is. Fun stuff for sure. Uh, there you have it, our Hefner Racing product, Hot Topics. Hefner Racing products know sprint car racing. Therefore, they know what is best for your team. No other trailer or shop accessory can match the quality, performance, and design. In fact, when you talk about trailers, top trailer builders use HRP trailer accessories to outfit their stock and custom-built units and they are always adding things as well, Aaron. They are. Like new cordless tool charging stations, their sleek and design hold two cordless drills, impacts, or flashlights, and battery chargers. It keeps clutter from your workbench, and a roster includes something for every racer, team, trailer, and shop. So don't settle for anything less than Sprint Car Racing's number one accessories manufacturer. I might have to, uh, to reach out to Jeff Wessel, because I've got clutter everywhere in my world. I know I do. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, and I. Well, the worst part of it is, is I, I'm in cleaning mode, and it's like I, I think like, oh, okay, we're getting there, and it's like, and then, then you I get the next battle, like yeah. The next pile. Yeah, we're about to move again. Oh so, my uh, gosh! Oh my gosh! It is a good decluttering time, but it's also one of those times where yeah. you're like, how do you collect this much? That's a, yeah, exactly. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yes, uh, we probably could use another word that starts off similarly with it exactly. as well. Exactly. So, uh, so yes, but your trailer, 
does not need to be cluttered like our lives, www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. We're going to go to the Sage Fruit Hotline in just a moment, and when we do, Lance DeWeese will join us there. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High-quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on our strength. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Uh, we talked about this in the opening segment. Sheer excellence is what we saw from that 69K team, the car, the driver, everything involved with it. And joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline is that driver, Lance Deweese. Hello, Lance. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing today? We are doing well. Lance, you and I talked at Millbridge a week or two ago and you told me you felt like your car was pretty good at Williams Grove at that point. Uh, I'll say uh, it is it has got to be a race car driver, and this is young race car driver, veteran race car driver's dream. It has got to be a race car driver's dream to get one dialed in and and to have a night like you guys did Saturday night. Yeah, we, we've we had a really good race car at Williams Grove for the last probably month, month and a half. And, um, you know, when we won the, the preliminary night at the Grove National, the – the quickie, a uh, quick race. Um, we we actually parked that car, didn't run it. We ran a different car against the Outlaws at Fort Earl then, um, just to say because it's been such a good car for us at Williams Grove. So um, it it was fast again. It was um, did everything we wanted it to do, and you know it, it was a great night. Lance, you, you talk about how good that car is. You just look like you have a great setup in it. Like you know, you carry that right front tire. The whole way down the straightaway, it looks like you have so much left rear drive. Is it something that you guys hit on? Is it like you mentioned you just kind of left the car as it is? Is it just you found a comfortable spot? Or or, or is it something specific? No, it's it's just a um we um this car's just been really good mm -hmm. for us. And um, you know, you race Aaron, all all the cars are a little different feeling. Mm -hmm. Some are worse than others and some are they're closer. To each other then some are way off you know mm -hmm. and don't ask me why nobody can really you know explain it either way um but this car's just been really a really good race car and um we we've had really good success with it at the grove and we just we just were going to run it there and after that rain out shortened event and we were really fast and and that track kind of like saturday's tracks not really our our mainstay type racetracks we we had a lot of speed and um it's just been really good the car's been really fast last month and a half two months even our other cars were fast we were fast against the outlaws at um fort roll so um we've just been really good our motor um, program's running really good um rider does a great job with that and um it's just it's just been everything's been going really good it just it, it, we were we were talking before the break. Um, yeah, and and you're and and you're up on the wheel. You're doing a good job, but I I, I can't fathom the detail that Donald, Davy, Calvin, everyone involved with it, Lance. Just can you even describe the the amount of detail that goes into to to getting a car like this? And 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 you just talk about it, even multiple cars that are pretty good, but I, th there's just a lot of energy behind the scenes that's got to go into this kind of performance. What there is, they 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 
put their heart and souls into this and um you know probably what a lot works at it um you know he busts his butt on it, it it's kind of his babies you know the cars are kind of his babies and you know they they keep tweaking on them they keep you know tuning on them they keep little by little and you know one of the things we have is we don't race so much we don't race all the time he can take the time and try to improve on something and you know nowadays the competition is so tight you know every little bit adds up and um you know, earlier in the year, we weren't very good by our standards. And, um, you know, we went to work, they went to work. And um, by the end of the year, we were pretty good at um, most places, except for Lincoln Speedway. Um, we just don't even discuss that race anymore. But um, <laughs> we, we've been pretty good at where we've been. Yeah, you sure have. Lance, the race on Saturday night, 40 laps, I know you're a seasoned veteran who's won a ton of races in your career, but when you start on the pole with the World of Outlaws and you have to maintain that lead for 40 laps with a ton of cautions and red flags, that that can't be easy. I know you've done it. You're Like I said, you've obviously had a ton of success, but there's some pressure starting on the pole and maintaining that lead the whole race. Yeah, there, there's a lot of pressure because, um, you know, the track kind of, was how I expected it to be. It was going to be a fast racetrack. It was going to be, you know, kind of on the narrow side. I don't want to say you couldn't pass because Danny come up through. Um, but up front, those those cars are all really, really fast, and you just don't you, – you just can't make a mistake and give somebody a shot. And, um, you know, I really messed up with one restart and um, got lucky. You know, um, brain got by me, but the red come out, so put me back in front and – um. We didn't mess up no more starts after that. Um, he has a really fast race car, Brent does. So um, those last 10, 12 laps, that's probably about as hard as I ran a car in a long time. And normally, like, when I'm leading, I kind of just get in a rhythm and try to keep the tires underneath and don't abuse nothing. Well, those last 12 laps, I was spinning tires, which is kind of out of my forte. Um, I just letting it eat. I, I didn't care because I just know how good Brent is and Anthony is and, you know, and how fast they are. So we just we just kept it going and um we we made it to the end lance three or four years ago when the world of outlaws would roll in there maybe with the exception of you on occasion uh back back years prior to that greg would greg would step up well and that sort of thing but but honestly this rivalry this back and forth between you guys it was three or four years ago. It was really leaning heavily toward mm. the world of outlaws. 2022, it's leaning very heavily toward the Pennsylvania Posse. You know, is the is the technology, is the back and forth? How does how does how does that how do those sways happen like that? Because those outlaw guys, I mean, they're you, you know, you've said it, they're the best in the world. But how does this sway happen between the two? Well, I mean, so is the locally guy. You know, locally, we we're kind of going through a little transition of. You know, you have me that's an old veteran, but there's nobody really close to me left. You know, after Greg's passing and Fred's um, retirement, there's nobody in, you know, there's nobody 10 years younger than me, mm. you know, racing locally that's really fast. And then you have Anthony, who's young, who's coming into his own now and is really fast. And Brent Marks, who, who's always been really fast, actually. Um, but last year and a half, two years got really fast. And um, back when he got back to his own program, um, you know, he found something that works really well for him, and um, it shows. I mean, he, to me, he's one of the. He, if he is not one of the best race cars, he is the best race car in the country overall this year. Because um, everywhere he goes, he's really fast, and it shows by the wins he has this year. You know, Anthony's been really fast. He's the leading feature winner in in the country. So. Um, you know, we, we've had some of the younger guys start stepping up and it takes years, you know, it's experience. Um, you know, the outlaws are tough. You know, they always are. They, they have really great equipment, really great drivers, really talented crew chiefs and their owners are no different than our owners. They want to win. And I think that's kind of what makes our area a little, a little different. You know, we've so, we've been so used to running really good against the outlaws ever since I started racing sprint cars in 85. So, I mean, our area has always had success, you know, on and off. Um, you know, this year I have three outlaw wins, which is really good for me. Um, and it's just one of those deals that it's, it, you know, it goes in cycles. They get a little bit, bit 
ahead um, over us on certain items, and we kind of get up, caught up a little bit. Um, but right now, our local guys are really good. I mean, Justin Whittle has come into his yeah. own, starting to learn how to win races and learn how to run multiple lines. So, I mean, our young crop of guys is, is looking pretty good. They really are. It's kind of like a, a little bit of the changing of the guard, the younger generation coming through. Lance, I want to go back to the race on Saturday night. That red flag, did you say after the race you had a tree stand that was, like, broken? And I wanted to see, when you have a red flag that many laps into a race, you're leading, and the track is kind of tricky. Like, it looked to me from, from watching on Dirt Vision that the curb got pretty big in, like, one and, and at three. How do you adjust... When you know that there's going to be laps with lap traffic, you're going to have to be able to run up top, but you also want to get as much drive as you can on the bottom. Well, yeah, I didn't really know there was nothing wrong with the wing tree under the red, that red. Okay. The next red, the next red, a uh, push truck drive guy yelled at me and said it was broke. Oh. Um, you know, I can't, I couldn't see, I looked, try to look, I couldn't see, you know, what was broke, but where he was explaining it to me, it, you lose a little bit of downforce from that. I've had that happen once or twice before and just you know on the left side wing tree in the back if it's not connected so when the board grabs the air mm. it actually moves mm. but it don't plant the car for a little bit you know what i'm saying it's just yep. a split you know second type deal but it actually it has a good bit of effect on the race car because the first time it ever happened i didn't know what happened to it and then we we learned what it was and um so i i had a weird my car was acting a little weird when i was trying to enter out high and just kind of snappy loose, and yeah, you know, I just kind of rode it off of this track. So um, after the fact, I think that probably was playing into it a little bit. But yeah, you know, the probably one of the big advantage for me is our program's not designed to run those curves, okay? Mm -hmm. But when those, that cushion gets rolled up heavy and hard, it's hard for anybody to run them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. So our car's yep. better off off the lip, off the curb, in the slick, actually. And, you know, I just made sure there at the end I didn't hit the curb and made sure I come off straight as I could to make sure I got off the corner. You know, even if I had to lose a little bit of speed through the middle of the corner, I just wanted to make sure I didn't put the car in a bad spot and get off the – and make sure I still got off the corner, you know, every lap there at the end just to, so um, Brent couldn't get a run at me. And – you know, I just I kind of was doing a flyer line on my on myself the whole race the last ten laps, um, just kind of going in there sliding. But you know, our car don't slide a lot. But yeah, you know, just kind of kind of blocking if he did get a run where he didn't have a clean opening to do a, mm -hmm. a hell Mary slide job on me. Yeah, yeah, man, it's fascinating the way you guys process it and and go forward. What do I see now? I I know you you and I chat about this. You've got Bridgeport this weekend. And then what did I hear? You guys have added a trip to Charlotte on the docket as far as the 69K yep. goes? Yeah, we're we're really busy. Um, um, so, yeah, we're going to run all three nights at Bridgeport, and then they'll leave um, Tuesday morning to head down to Charlotte, and we're going to run Charlotte this year. So um, they're, they're, they, they talk, we talked about it a month or so ago about maybe doing it, and um, they just kind of, you know, they want to go do it. You know, we're pretty fast. Our engine program's running really good. So, you know, it's just something, you know, we all can go do. Because you just never know when, you know, when's the last time you'll be able to do something. So um, we'll go do it. And, you know, hopefully we can run really good at Bridgeport. I don't have a whole lot of laps there. That's Originally, we weren't going to run all three nights, but that's why we're running all three nights, just so we get some more laps there. In Charlotte, I've had some success there. I've won there against the Outlaws. So, um, you know, you never know, but it. You know, I think the format this year is going to be a little bit nicer for the teams, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know, two out of three days that you race, you know, and it's a full program instead of, you know, time trials all in one night and then, you know, the other nights or something else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to be worn out because I'm leaving tomorrow morning for Millbridge. So then I have to come back home. Then um, my son um, will practice Sunday at Millbridge and race Monday and Tuesday at Millbridge. So I'm going to have a busy week. So how is Cole doing? I haven't been able to make it up to Millbridge this year. How how is his career coming along? He's doing really good. I'm I'm really proud with his progress. He actually shocks me a little bit for never racing nothing in his life before this year. And I kind of you know this our our 600s in Pennsylvania is kind of like our sprint car racing in Pennsylvania. It's pretty darn tough. Mm -hmm. And um, it shows when the guys leave and go out and you know Stephen Snyder won the first night of the KKM. Um, 
they they go out and they win these other big micro shows that are across the country. So um, he he's really improved a lot, really gained a lot of um experience, and um he's he's doing really good, um better than I expected. So um, I, I at times I have to remember that he is a rookie, and mm. with how I think about stuff sometimes because sometimes it just blows me away with what he does with not ever racing before. So um. No, he's doing really good. We're racing a lot, so um, it's keeping me busy. And um, Tommy Beavers, who's um, used to race sprint cars and goat carts and all, he helps out a lot, takes him when I can't take him. So, uh, yeah, I have a great group of people help me with him when I, I can't take him races so he can go racing, so he can get his laps. Yeah, fun stuff. It really mm-hmm. has. It's been great catching up with you down here at Millbridge. It'll be great catching up with you over the next couple of weeks as you spend a lot of time down here in North Carolina. Lance, congratulations again on the win on Saturday night. And as always, we appreciate you joining us here on Wing Nation. Well, thanks a lot. And I guess I might see you tomorrow night there, Steve. You'll see me tomorrow night. Absolutely. (laughs) You'll see me tomorrow night there at Millbridge. Good stuff. Thanks, Lance. All right. That is see, see you, Aaron. See ya. There we go. Lance DeWeese joining us here on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us when we come back. Shane Golubek from out in California. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Just like racing components, Aggressive Hydraulics purpose builds hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer-specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile-style, single-stage cylinders, as well as multi-stage telescopic cylinders. It's a no-one-size-fits-all approach with Aggressive Hydraulics. Hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. Check out the video of their story at AggressiveHydraulics.com. Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires right on Our Strength Continues. Let's go right back to the Sage Fruit Hotline. We talked to the big winner on the East Coast, Lance Deweese. Let's talk to the big winner on the West Coast this past weekend, a now three-time champion of the Trophy Cup, Shane Golubic joins us. Hello, Shane. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you guys? I am doing well. We are doing well. Um, Winning... The the format of this thing, the three night challenge of this thing, this has got to be immense satisfaction when you when you get to the end of it and know that you've racked up more points and done better than anybody else in this one. This has got to be a satisfying win, Shane. Yeah, it is. Anytime you can win a Trevor Cup championship, uh, it means a lot. It, it just takes so much uh, to go right to be able to to be on top at the end of the end of the weekend uh, and send, uh, you know, above the other 85 teams that were there. So um, it's not like you can just luck into it with uh, one good night. Uh, you have to have uh, good good uh, performances every time you hit the track. So it's uh, quite the challenge, but uh, we were pretty happy to be able to uh, come out on top and um, finish it off there with a really strong run from 20th to 3rd in the feature. It was uh, a really good way to, uh, to cap it off for sure. Shane, you know, every racer talks about when you go on track, you do the best you can. But is there a difference when you go into Trophy Cup, knowing that every time you're on the track, you know, you've got to pass cars? Is there a different mindset? Um, I, I know I approach it with a different mindset for sure. Uh, I don't know if, you know, everybody does. But um, you, just look, I, you just have to look at that race a little bit differently than, than others um, because you're, you're looking at the overall picture. The money gets paid to the overall champion, not the winner of the race. So um, you have to kind of keep that in the back of your mind, and um, everybody's there to, to be the champion. So, um, and in order to do that, uh, every time you hit the track, uh, if you're fast, they're putting you in the back. So um, you have to be uh, capable of passing race cars. You have to be uh, smart with not – 
tearing up your equipment while trying to pass race cars. So um, it's just a lot of a lot of different uh, strategies that kind of play into it. Um, but the first step is always getting a good qualifying lap in uh, to get your weight your weight kicked off, and that's what we were able to do. Go quick time, and uh, from there it was just kind of managing uh, each race as it as it comes and uh, trying to pass as many cars as you can. Was there a time during the course of the three days where you were like, okay, we're really, really good, or we're in trouble here? Does does does, does that kind of ebb and flow over the course of things as well? Um, yeah, you, you, you know, you try to control your mindset there a little bit, not get too high, not get too low. Mm. But uh, I knew right, right on our first night when we were uh, quick time in our group, uh, I knew our car was going to be capable. Um, and I, I just had a good feeling that uh, it um, – it's always so important to get a good qualifying lap in um, and get those 150 points right off the bat. And, and from there, it was kind of a uh, game on and, and just trying to get as many points as you can. And um, I think the moment I realized that we really had a really good shot was our uh, qualifier on the, on the final night. It's kind of the last opportunity you have to uh, get points before the final feature. And um, we were able to go uh, eighth to third in, in that race. And um, that really helped put us in a good spot, got us to the high point position going into the feature. And, um, and then it's, uh, you start 20th and you got to try and figure out a way to get to the front. And, uh, it's all up to you at that point. So that's, uh, that was kind of what we were shooting for. And, uh, luckily we were able to make it work. Shane, talk about, about your team. It's definitely a family operation. You, you we have Matt Wood, your father-in-law is a huge part of it. Your brother is your crew chief. How neat is it to be able to celebrate victories like this, not only with your team, but they're also your family. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm super lucky to be part of this team. Like you said, uh, father-in-law, Matt, he owns the team. and um, You know, he provides us with everything we need. And, uh, it's awesome to get to work with my brother, Dustin. He's uh, turned into one heck of a crew chief. He's uh, building quite the resume lately here. So uh, pretty proud of him, proud of all we've been able to do. And um, even down, you know, beyond that, I've got two of my cousins uh, that work on the race car, uh, we got another guy named Trevor who's basically become family, and uh, basically every single race we bring my two kids, Charlie and uh, Tucker, and uh, my wife and my brother's wife. You know, just everybody uh, comes to pretty much every race. And um, if you walk by our pit area before uh, or during the night, it looks almost more like a daycare than it does a race pit. So uh, we've got toys everywhere. And, and this week, my uh, my daughter, she just turned three, and she got some golf clubs for Christmas or for her birthday. So um they were playing golf in the pit area we had a little par three set up uh in our pits and um you know we're able to do that as a family and have have a ton of fun but at the same time be able to to uh really set our minds straight when it comes down to to racing and uh basically just be able to compete at the top level even with uh, some of the distractions we have in our pit area but we wouldn't have it any other way uh I love being able to race with uh, the family all around, and uh, it makes it even that much sweeter when you do uh, win a big race like that. For sure. Now, I'm curious, are the the golf clubs a strategic plan for your daughter? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be too bummed if she chose the golf route rather than (laughs) racing, for sure. But, uh, yeah, right now, uh, you know, she she loves going to the races, and she uh, loves playing in the dirt, and she's actually more into tractors and and, – trucks than she is anything else so who knows what uh, she's going to be into but um, i just love having them at the racetrack uh they uh they have a blast i'm going to give you some advice from working with my co-host aaron here <laughs> don't introduce them to horses yeah don't go ponies don't go ponies <laughs> don't go ponies aaron right. is in pony I'll write that down. yeah aaron yeah. is in pony hell that's for sure <laughs> shit <laughs> Well, I, yeah. Yeah, true. True, yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. Shane, that racetrack on Saturday night. Whew. My God, there was one guy that was running the wall, and I don't mean up <laughs> along the wall. I mean running on the wall. Can you? How do you? How do you, as a race car driver, how do you process the the the, the variation of that track you guys had? Yeah, Tulare uh, is one of a kind for sure. It's uh, you can see a little bit of everything when you come to Tulare. Uh, it got ramped up on the wall uh, pretty much every night, but it just continued to ramp more and more. And yeah, I think the driver you're referring to is Tony Gomes. He was up yeah. there uh, putting on a show I saw, saw on the replays. Uh, I didn't venture up there too much. Uh, my car was working really good on the bottom. And 
in my position, it just didn't make much sense to try and risk my car like that. As, as you guys probably saw, his car couldn't hold up uh, running in that line for too long. And was able, he ended up, I think, knocking the rear end out of it. But uh, I'm sure he sold some T-shirts in the process for sure. But uh, our, our goal was to make sure our car was there at the end of the 50 laps. And um, we were able to pick our way through there. Uh, ran the top early in the race. Uh, not quite up on the wall like Tony, but um, we were able to make a bunch of passes. And I think that's actually when we won the race was early in the race. Uh, just made some good moves early and, and put some distance between myself and uh, the other high point guys and um, just kind of maintain that the rest of the race and, and try to stay in front of them. And it worked out. So uh, just definitely, definitely never know what you're going to get at Tulare. You know, uh, at some point in the weekend, you're going to have to bang those boards down. Uh, but at the same time, you have to it, have to be smart and uh, definitely it's really easy to tear your car up there. So you have to be, uh, be capable of making sure your car lasts till the end of the race. Shane, the other aspect of the Trophy Cup that's really neat is, is what you do for charity. They raised $325,000 for Make-A-Wish this year. How, how neat is it to be a part of a race that does that? You know, all of us racers travel the country trying to make money and, and survive as a race team. But to see what they do for such an important charity, how, how fun is that to, to see? Oh, it's awesome. It's, it just keeps getting bigger every year. Dave and everybody at, at uh, the Trophy Cup do, does an awesome job, uh, you know, raising money and and just uh, every night after the races, there's something to be done. It's something to, to do with all the fans. And, uh, the, the first night they had uh, bicycle or tricycle races and RC car races in the pavilion and everybody's hanging out, you know, having high five uh, catering. And uh, the second night was Taco Bravo night. They were serving tacos to everybody. And uh, actually Saturday morning, they had a dunk tank for the drivers. I, I participated in that. That was pretty cool. Got to sit up on the dunk tank and, let some of the younger fans uh, try and dunk me. So, um, and all the while, every event, uh, just racking up more and more money for Make-A-Wish. It's a pretty cool deal to be a part of, and it's a lot of fun for me and my family to be able to to, to do it. Um, you know, my daughter and, uh, and my son, Tucker, they both uh, had a blast trying to dunk me. So, um, <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of money just gets raised nonstop throughout the weekend, and uh, yeah, it's amazing to see they they racked up three hundred twenty five thousand this year. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. That's for sure. Outrageous. It yeah. is. It, it's crazy. It really is. Final question for you: uh, What all you got left on the on the docket here? I know California. You guys race all year long, but uh, what all you, what what all you got left as far as uh, sprint car racing goes? Um, I think we got a couple NARC shows left. Uh, we're going to go to Kern County this coming weekend, uh, and then Stockton the following weekend. And there's a, it's actually a doubleheader at Stockton with the SCCT finale as well. Um, and then we'll kind of set the sprint cars aside and uh, get the midgets out. And, um, our Matwood team's got uh, a bunch of midgets in our stable, and we love racing the USAC stuff at the end of the year. So uh, really looking forward to the Hangtown 100 in a, a few weeks, too. That's Matt's race at Plasterville. Uh, Huge midget race and big money on the line, and it's at my favorite racetrack, Plasterville Speedway. So uh, that's always something I circle on my calendar. So that's coming up, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, the Hangtown 100, man, that's another biggie. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a that's a that's another yep. one. That's a. I I think I just need to move to California because everything on my bucket <laughs> list is out in California. I just need to just need yeah. to get, get some frequent flyer miles. That's for sure. Shane, we really appreciate your time joining us here today. Uh, continued success. Congratulations on the win. Continued success, and we'll be following along. All right, yep, thank you, appreciate it, and thanks for having me on. There we go, Shane Golubic joining us here on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires continues on. Stay with us more in just a moment. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Circle B Diecast is the new diecast outlet from Plan B Sales. What started as a Lionel and Chase Authentics apparel distributor has grown into the largest distributor of diecast and now includes Auto World, Greenlight Collectibles, Brand Art, Sam Bass Artwork, 
and University of Racing Lines. They have a huge inventory. The folks at Circle B Diecast love racing, and they support drivers like Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Christopher Bell, and many others with sponsorships and partnerships. On orders of $20 or more, use promo code MRN for free shipping. You can check them out at www.circlebdiecast.com. Flow Racing is the ultimate digital home track. For race fans everywhere, subscribe today and stream over 1,300 racing events live and on demand. Flow Racing is something for everyone. It's what we know. Sprint cars are there. NASCAR weekly racing series, drag racing, off-road, and much, much more. Learn more at flowracing.com forward slash go MRN. That's flowracing.com forward slash go MRN. Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. Right on, our strength continues on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our friends at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. We do it under the category of the birthday calendar. C.K. Spurlock, Dave Blaney. Lots and lots of Dave Blaney well wishes yesterday on social media. Yeah. It was good to see that later this week. Uh, well, tomorrow, some guy by the name of Sammy Swindell has a birthday. Uh, August Gus Hoffman, Mark Light later this week. Today would have been the, let's see, do, 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 87th birthday of 2001 Sprint Car Hall of Fame class inductee, Jack Miller. Jack was born in Danvers, Illinois. He started as a motorcycle racer, but he learned that while he was not racing or qualifying races, he could go to the announcer's tower and talk about the races and had some talent there. So much so that he started making more money announcing than racing. He got the attention of the AMA, caught the attention of Bud Carson, Shane Carson's dad, who was Mm -hmm. a big promoter in the area, promoted all of Bud's weekends of racing, caught the attention of the Joey Chitwood Thrill Show and Evil Knievel, and continued to just rack up impressive announcing skills. 1974, he started a 25-year stint Mm -hmm. as the announcer of the Knoxville Nationals. He actually, for a time, managed a bowling alley in Knoxville so he could be close to Knoxville and do stuff for the track, PR-wise. 1978, a guy by the name of Ted Johnson put together a little deal at Devil's Bowl that was called the World of Outlaws. Jack was the announcer that night. He announced most of those races at Devil's Bowl, announced the Chili Bowl, announced some at Manzanita with the also Hall of Famer, Wendy McDonald. Mm-hmm. And uh, was an announcer at East Bay. That's where he lived. He made his uh, home in his latter years in Tampa Bay. And passed away in 2010, but is forever enshrined at one sprint car place in Knoxville, Iowa, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. They have their 14th annual uh, sprint car raffle coming up. It's a triple X chassis, Moyle Racing Engine. $20 each for tickets, six for 100 That drawing is coming up December 16th, sprintcarraffle.com. Uh, their current display, which is getting ready to go away, I think. Their display to ask God. Mm-hmm. But Aaron, if you want to buy the raffle tickets, fine. But you can also just become a supporting member as well of the Hall of Fame. You sure can for only $25. And you get free admission to the museum and 10% discount on museum store merchandise. There we go. So good stuff. That is for sure. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. We kicked this around a little bit when we were talking about Williams Grove results. And uh, I kind of kept some numbers this year. World of Outlaws versus the Pennsylvania Posse. Ten scheduled races, six at Williams Grove, three at Port Royal, and one at the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. When we look at wins, six for the Posse, two for the Outlaws, one for Kyle Larson, (laughs) and one for Rain. Lance DeWeese led the charge with three wins. Macri, remember, he swept Port Royal a few weeks ago, had two. Lone race winners representing the posse, Brent Marks, picked up a win at Williams Grove. Jacob Allen, remember, he won Lincoln. Brad Sweet won the Southern Nationals at Williams Grove, and then Kyle Larson. When you look at podiums, we had three times this year the posse swept the podium. Aaron, I don't don't don't. remember when it happened the first time. We were like, when is the last time this happened? It happened three times this year. Um. 27 spots, nine races, three podium, three podium spots. 27 spots on the podium. 16 to 8 posse over the outlaws. 
Others that got the podium, Kyle Larson, Justin Peck, and Rico Averill each had a trip on the podium. So uh, I, I like Lance's description of it. The young and 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 boy, a lot of those that that was on the back mm-hmm. of those three drivers: uh, yeah. Lance Deweese, Brent, Brent Marks, Marks, and um, Anthony Mack. Anthony Mack. Yep. Crazy stuff. Good stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. How old Lance, is Anthony? Yeah. 23? Yeah, something like that. Something, yeah. I mean, future is, future <laughs> yeah. is bright. Future is bright, that's for sure. Uh, the near-term future has the attention at Bridgeport, New Jersey. It is Sprinttoberfest. 410 Sprint cars, URC 360 cars, USAC East Coast non-wing sprint cars, and the new sprint cars. Friday night, open practice, non-winner's uh, race. Saturday, full program for the 410s, qualifiers for URC and USAC. Saturday night, fifteen or Sunday, $15,000 to win for a 410 sprint car race plus USAC and URC. Uh, Shane Golubek just mentioned this. King of the West NARC Series, sprint car showdown. Saturday night, Kern County Speedway, Bakersfield, California. Race number 19 of the 20 race season. Uh, Dominic Selzy, pretty good on the point battle. Mm -hmm. He can start qualifying, uh, get a lap in, I think, for these last two races, he's in good shape. And finally, the Lucas Oil ASCS National Sprint Car Tour. They are in one of my favorite spots, Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Um, Creek County Speedway, this is going to put a bow around it. Uh, It's been known as the Fall Fling, but they've renamed it Fuzzy's Fall Fling. Emmett Hans, late wife Mm -hmm. Fuzzy, beloved by Everybody that ever met her, and I, I met her in passing a couple of times, didn't never get a chance to her. I always chatted with Emmett, never talked to her. But anybody that knew Fuzzy loved Fuzzy. So it's Fuzzy's Fall Fling in her honor. Going to wrap up the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour schedule. So, And then World Finals, all dirt roads lead to Charlotte next week. Starts off Monday and Tuesday at Millbridge with the mm-hmm. Diage Micro Showdown, the Carolina Micro Showdown, and then right over. And I agree with Lance. I like the format. Um, complete show for the sprint cars. Sprint cars and late yeah. models on Wednesday. Sprint cars are off Thursday, so it's late models and yeah. modifieds. And then it is modifieds and sprint cars. Everyone has a night off in I like there. It. Uh, modifieds are first one off. They don't come down. They don't come in until Thursday. And then Saturday we put them all out there and do our thing. So uh, it's going to be a fun, fun time. Uh, all dirt roads lead to Charlotte. We'd love to have you join us here in our home area for sure. So Aaron, great, great show, man. I'll tell you what, Shane Gullibeck and. Uh, and Lance Dewey's never going wrong talking to those nope, two characters. certainly not. Good stuff. That is for sure. Uh, you can follow along our social media channels. We're on Twitter at Wing Nation. We're on Facebook with a page and a group, Wing Nation. YouTube page has all of these interviews and everything. You can get Wing Nation gear at www.shopwingnation.com. They make lovely, lovely, lovely Christmas gifts. You can get that now. We're almost in November, so we can start Ugh. talking about it. Well, I've been talking about it for the last month and a half. Uh, you can do that, or uh, I'm a, I'm guessing probably Tom Book Motorsports probably in Bridgeport, New Jersey, because they race more than anybody else, and there's <laughs> a race, so I wouldn't be shocked if they're not over there. You can get it on the Tom Book Motorsports Justin Peck merchandise trailer. Coming up this weekend, Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit, Dominic Selsey joins us on the program. Never a dull moment with Dominic. I'm sure there was no laughs. Uh, No laughs. Good, good stuff, that's for sure. We caught up with Dominic as well. You can catch that Wednesday night on Rev in Canada and Friday and Saturday on Mav TV. We truly do appreciate Lance DeWeese and Shane Gullivick joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength.